bringing up the old case. Oh, here comes some more. Well, thank you for coming. Hey, here comes somebody else. Okay, let's get started. Can you guys see okay over there? Do you want to squish in at all? You can if you want to. My name's Carrie, and there's so many of you, I can't learn all of your names, but, but you can know that my name's Carrie, so if you have a question, you can. Hi, Leah. Hi, Leah. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I know. So we're going to read some stories. We're going to read some stories about trees, and then we'll go for a walk, and do you think we'll see any trees? Yes, we probably will, won't we? What kind of tree? Oh, wow. Yes. Did you want to say something? Oh, wow. Okay, so I can get what? A strawberry tree? <laughs> You do? Oh my. Well, let's read, let's read the stories that we have about trees. And our first one is called, A Tree is Nice. And there's a little girl who's watering the tree. And there's a big tree. And who else is in that picture who likes trees? A dog. A and a cat. And why would the little girl be watering her tree? Because they, they have to grow. Oh, yes. Trees need water, don't they? And this tree is very tiny. But look right beside it. There's a great big tree. Where? Right here. Okay, so this says a tree is nice. Trees are very nice. They fill up the sky. When you look up at a tall, tall tree, you see lots and lots of branches and leaves. They go beside rivers or down valleys. They live up on hills. What's that guy doing? Fishing! Yeah, he's fishing. Do fish like trees? No. <laughs> They're not beside trees, but how about trees put branches in the water? They drop leaves in the water? Oh, and that, oh I saw a big stick in the water when I went fishing before. You did? And you know what? Fish like to go inside those branches. They feel safe. You did. Oh shoot. Okay. Okay. Trees make the woods, and they make everything beautiful. Did you know that? Hi, welcome. Did you know that trees help our air stay clean? That's one really good reason we love trees. They clean our air for us. Even if you have just one tree, it's nice too. A tree is nice because it has leaves. The leaves whisper in the breeze. Did you know if you're in the house all day long and you don't get to go outside, even if you look out at a tree, you feel better? I have two trees. I have three trees at my house. You do. You must feel really good then. Yeah. In the fall, the leaves come down and we play in them. We walk in leaves and roll in leaves. We build playhouses out of leaves. And then we pile them up and sometimes have a bonfire. But if we don't burn the leaves, if they just stay on the ground, they get older and they crumple up. You've seen old, old leaves. And then pretty soon they turn into soil. And they grow strong, more big trees. And the worms like them, and the bugs like them, and the little animals like them. And look who else likes trees. People. People love trees. People like monkeys. Like monkeys, yep. How about if it's an apple tree? Ooh. Oh, we like apple. Apple. I like an apple. What else grows on trees? My grandma has an apple tree. Does she? Raise your hand if you know something apple. else that grows on an apple. Does she? What else grows on an apple tree? I mean, on a tree. Strawberries. No, strawberries My grow on vines on the ground, but they're good, aren't they? What else grows on a tree? Yeah. Uh, uh, apples. 
Apples, what else? Oranges grow on trees. What else? Oranges. Yeah, oranges. Yes, do you know some more? Pineapples. Uh, yes, and pears and coconuts. Yes. Um, I like pears. Yeah, I like pears too. Lots and lots of things yeah. grow on trees. Limes and lemons. Do you like lemonade? Yeah. 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 All kinds of things grow on trees. How about swings? And look under this under this tree is a big garden. Trees give us shade. Does anybody live in a tree? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about how about who? Who does? Bears. Yeah, birds and bears, bears and squirrels. Lots of things live in trees. What about bees? Bees live in trees. Honeybees live in. Oh, look who likes to lie in the shade. I love the trees. Yeah, do you like to be in the shade under the trees? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, here's a whole family. Trees give us shade. What do we build lots, like what did we build the nature center out of? Wood. Where did that come from? The trees. The trees. So we use it for building. We use it for all kinds of things. Do we need trees? Yeah. Yeah, we do. There's a house that was built with trees. If you look at this, notice the wood on the side here. See how it's all different colors? Way over in this corner are the names of the trees because all of, each tree has a different kind of wood. And you can see all the different things that trees do. Okay, let's read about a tree named Steve. Have you ever heard of a tree with a name? I have a tree named Steve. Have you read that book before? Yeah. Oh. It says, Dear Kids, a long time ago when you were little, Mom and I took you to where we wanted to build a house for us to live in. But to build there, men had to come and clear the land. Okay, this family is going to build a house and they're going to cut down some trees. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Remember how many things like trees? Birds and squirrels and bears and and they're gonna bees? and bees and they're gonna cut them down. I remember there was one tree, however, that the three of you said we couldn't cut down. Adam thought it was crying, and Lindsay said it looked nervous, and Sari, who was only two, couldn't say the word tree, so she called it Steve. Do you have little brothers and sisters who can't say words exactly right? So they called their tree Steve. Look how big Steve is. It's a big tree. They didn't want to cut it down, so they built their house right next to Steve so they could live right by that tree. And so they were in the shade. Wouldn't that be nice to have a house in the shade of a big, beautiful tree? Okay, and they did so many things. Look, they have a tire swing. They played baseball in the shade. They tied a rope on and played jump rope. They had so much fun with Steve, their tree. They hung up a clothesline. <laughs> Look what happened to the dog. He's in the shade under the tree. He thought he was relaxing in the laundry. The laundry fell on him. He got some underwear on his head. That silly dog. They put up their light. had lights out and they had a tent out under Steve, their tree. Oh, and then in the fall it had beautiful leaves and they could have lots of fun under their tree, who they named Steve. And then the snow came and look, the animals were all around and their puppy dog loved going out to play. The squirrels had nuts hiding underneath the tree. The rabbits were there. Everybody looked at the tree. Oh, and somebody even put a big old hammock in the tree. A giant. A giant guy, yeah. And, uh-oh. Then the tree doctor came and had to give Steve a haircut that made him look like a big old thumb. So see that man with his chainsaw? Part of Steve's branches were kind of sick, so they cut off the sick ones to try to keep Steve well. Let's see what happened. Through the years, Mom and I tried to show you, in a world filled with strangers, the peace that comes from having things you can count on and a safe place to return after a hard day or a long trip. 
Which brings me to the point of this last, this letter. Last week, a big storm came. Look, they're getting their picture taken under the big, beautiful tree. What do you think a storm might do to a tree if it's sick? It might fall down. Oh, goodness. Look what happened to Steve. Oh, no. That is too bad. They love Steve. And now, look, he fell apart. Now he's dead. Are we sad? Sure we are, but even in his final moments when he could have fallen on our house and Sari swings in Kirby the dog's house or mom's garden, Steve did his last trick and he protected all of us and, and fell where it didn't hurt anything. Friends like that are hard to find. So the tree fell down, but it didn't hurt anything. So when you come home from Grandma's next week, Steve will not be able to greet you like he has in the past, but he'll always be with us because of all the good memories they have with Steve the tree. The dog is funny. Yep, the dog likes the way the tree was. And a different tree at the end of the other end of our yard is going to be our new Steve tree. So see, they built a new tree house in a new tree. That's the good thing about trees is they have seeds and they make new baby trees grow. So trees lose their leaves and some sticks and that all that stuff on the ground gets crunched up and it turns into rich, rich soil. And then when they drop their seeds down, then new babies can come up. What so if they step on the baby trees? Yeah, you don't want to step on too many. That's right. It's not good for leaves you to get stepped on. That's right. So let's look at this one. Here's a, here's a book you have to guess with me. It says, who's been in the woods? Do you like to take walks in the woods? No. Do you like to? Uh, no. Let's see what these people find in the woods. Here's a picture of some Jack in the Pulpits. You can't find Jack in the Pulpits anywhere but in the woods. My grandma used to find those for me. So here they go, walking in the woods, two, two kids and their dog, and what are they going to find? They went on a path, and they walked under an old cherry tree, and they saw an empty nest. Who do you think could have been there? A northern oriole. Look at that. See how he builds his nest like kind of a jug? It's hanging, it's a swing. The Oriole nest, you can always tell because it looks like a swing or a little basket hanging upside down in the tree. That's an Oriole. Now a tree split apart and a flat stone just juts right out of there. Who's been by that flat stone and left something on that stone? Maybe a beaver, maybe a squirrel. Let's see. It was a squirrel. You're right. And you know how we knew? Because the little bits of nuts, because squirrels like to eat the nuts out of the tree. Now they were walking along, and a clump of milkweed plants grows on the other side, and something's hanging from a milkweed pod. What hangs from milkweed? Does anybody know? Milkweed, milkweed is what monarchs sit on. Not just any butterfly, but monarchs love milkweed. And, we, and, they, and they look like that when they're growing into a butterfly. Yep, yeah, it starts like a chrysalis, and then it turns into a caterpillar, and then it turns into the butterfly. Other way around, kind of, but it goes in a cycle. You did? Good for you. But not my turn. Right, right. Okay, now the tree, the bark has been gnawed off all those branches. What animal takes the bark off the branches? A chainsaw. A chainsaw. <laughs> and a beaver, did I hear? Beaver. Beaver. Yes. Beaver. A beaver mite or a deer mite or a rabbit. And mice the Now she found, this little girl found a blue feather on the ground. 
And it's and then she found five more blue feathers. That and she is said, a blue Who's bird. it could be a bluebird. Let's see. Oh look. It's it's a big hawk, and the hawk is eating a blue jay. That's why he lost his feathers. See the big hawk's beak? He's like he's like our bald eagle. Yeah. Yeah. He's like our bald eagle out here. He has a big, strong beak, and he eats meat for supper. And and now something black. They're looking at something black. It's like a little cave in the woods. And they stop and they look at some bones that are on the edge. Who lives in a cave who might leave bones lying? Bear, bear, bear. A bear might. Something ate some meat and left the bones. Let's see. Oh, it could have been a, it's a fox. The fox must, let's see. It, oh, a woodchuck. The fox ate a woodchuck. So the mother and daddy fox go out and they bring the meat into the babies to eat because the babies don't know how to go hunting yet. So the mother and daddy brought it into them. Now there's something strange stuck on a rock. It says there's a gray boulder and something is stuck on the rock. I don't know if you can see what that is. It's a mud dauber. So it's a kind of wasp and it uses mud to put his house up under um, rocks or trees or buildings. They use mud like glue. Now, it says there's a tall flower and another stalk next to it, but the flower's gone. Who eats flowers right off the stalk? Anybody know who eats flowers? What? Bear, maybe, but no. A deer. A deer. Did you really? A deer. Yep. There are lots of deer who live in our woods around here. And now it says they found a blanket under a tree, and it had a picnic in it. Who would leave a blanket and a picnic basket out for them? A dad? A dad? No, or Papa. Yes. There, it looks like it was their dad, you're right. Their dad left a picnic basket and a blanket under the tree for them. Good guess. Okay, you are good wood guessers. So let's look at the great Kapok tree. This is the kind of tree that doesn't grow here in Iowa, but it's a tree that lots and lots of animals depend on. You what? Have you read it already? Okay. The great Kapok. Oh, you know what? This, well, let's look at it. Here's a little boy out in a jungle looking up at this big, big, big tree. See how big it is? A huge tree. It, has a snake on it. it does look like it has a snake. It does. A snake on it and birds around it? I think it's a Oh, it's a boa constrictor snake, and he slithered down to the trunk. Look, he's right beside where the man is sleeping. Oh my goodness, what kind of book is this? And look at all the animals around him. Bees and butterflies. All of bees them like to live. Bees can sting you. Yeah, bees can sting you. But it's not stinging him because he's not moving and he's just sleeping. So the bee doesn't want to sting him because the bee's just looking for something to eat. And now look at all the monkeys who came around. When you stay still in the woods, you can see lots of animals. They're not afraid when he stays very still. And now here come all those beautiful birds. If we, yeah, if we go out in the woods where we are, in Iowa, we won't see the same birds, but we will see birds. Oh my goodness. Now out come the frogs and the toads. When we're in the woods, we don't see frogs so much because, yes, tree frogs are here. We see toads more often because they're the ones who don't need so much water. Oh my goodness, now what did he see? Wow. We won't see 
that beside us. Let's see what that is. It's a, oh, it's a jaguar. You're right. You knew. <laughs> yeah. And here come porcupines. We have porcupines in Iowa. <laughs> and now look, the anteaters came to look at him. Can you imagine how many, how, how many animals like to live in the woods? Here's a giant sloth. Lots and lots of animals need to live in trees, don't they? Oh, boy. And here comes another little boy looking for his daddy. That's probably his daddy. It probably is. And the man woke up, and before him was his son and all of those creatures. He was surprised to see all those animals. And I bet the animals were surprised when he started to move because he'd been so still for so long they weren't afraid of him. Now they're afraid of him. So that's the end of that one. Let's look at when the woods hum. Here's a little girl going out in the woods with her dog. And let's see. What do you think? Will a dog cause problems in the woods with all those animals? What do you think? Probably. Probably. Here's a dad and a little boy and their dog, and they're going to go down a path in the woods. Let's see what they find. Oh, they found a cicada. This is the year that we have lots and lots of cicadas coming out. Has anybody seen one? No, I haven't either. I heard they're seeing them in Des Moines. But not here. The cicadas live down in the earth. The reason they're hard to see is, guess how often they come out of the ground? Once, once every 17 years. So it, it won't be till you're old, like till you're out of college, till you're 20-something will be the next time a cicada comes out. Not even when I'm 16. Probably not when you're 16, nope. Okay, this book is called Johnny Appleseed. And Johnny Appleseed is famous. Do you know that book? What do cicadas eat? I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> when they come out of the ground, they quickly find another, another cicada, and they, and they get ready to have a baby cicada, and then they die really quick. So I don't know if they eat very much. Maybe when they're underground, they eat little um, underground things like worms and things like that. But I don't know what they eat. We can ask the ranger when we leave. Maybe, maybe Mike will be here and he'll know what they eat. But when they're out in the air like we are, they almost, they hardly have any time to eat anything. Okay, Johnny Appleseed was a man who a long time ago planted tons and tons and tons of apple trees. And he, he walked and walked and walked. He didn't have a car. He didn't have a horse. He just had his feet. Can you make your feet do walking motions? Does he have a horse? Yep. And now, okay, hold your feet still. Now pretend like you don't have any food to eat and no mom or dad to fix your food. So you put a pot on your head. See how he has his pot on his head? So get your pot out, put it on your head, walk with your feet, and now the easiest thing to carry, he doesn't have a refrigerator, does he? No refrigerator. He has a sack of apples. Because apples can stay fresh when they're not in the refrigerator. So put your sack of apples on your back, put your pot on your head, and walk. That's what Johnny Appleseed did. And he walked and walked and walked, and he ate lots and lots of apples. And everywhere he went, he planted apple trees. So everyone would have apples. So here's a story of Johnny Appleseed, who planted lots and lots of apples. Here's the mom and a little guy, lived a long time ago, and they loved apples. So look at Johnny Appleseed up in his apple trees. Aren't there lots of apples? Yeah. Can we live wherever there's apples? 
And look who else likes apples. Deer. Deer and bears. Lots and lots of animals like apples. Oh my goodness. And look who else likes trees. Who's this? More people. These are American Indians, and they they use trees to make canoes for themselves, so they can go in the in the rivers. Yep, or they might use a tree that was already falling down. That's what happened with this wood when we built our nature center. This wood fell down in a big storm, and so the nature center rangers went out and cut down the trees and. And because they were all over roads and they were falling on other trees, so they cut them up a little bit and they saved them so that when we built this, they could use them. So they used trees that fell down. So here, look at this little wolf way out in the woods. He needs a tree to climb into and stay warm. And you know what? I think it is time for us to go for a walk. So I have a little poem to tell you before we go. And it's about a tree, and it's about climbing a tree. So can you pretend like you're climbing up a tree? <laughs> and when you get to the top, look out around the woods. And what might you see in the woods? A wolf. You might see a wolf? What else could you see? I see a wolf. I see a Yes, you see lots of things. OK. Put your hand. Okay, put your hands back in your laps. The trunk of the tree is the road for me on a sunny summer day. Up the bark that is brown and dark through funnels of leaves that sway and tickle my knees. In the trembly breeze, that's where I make my way. Leaves in my face and twigs in my hair in a squeeze of a place, but I don't care. Some people talk of summer walks through clover and weeds and hay. Some people stride where the hills are wide and the rocks are speckled gray, but the trunk of a tree is a road for me on a sunny summer day. So let's go out and see what kind of trees we can find. But before we go, hold still. Let's count it, shall we? How many 